Dawson McAllister is the president and founder of Dawson McAllister Association. And he's a nationally and internationally recognized as a gifted youth communicator. And during his career, he has spoken over two million teenagers and young adults face to face and another seven million by radio, television, and video. His radio show, Dawson McAllister Live, is heard in over 200 markets across America and is currently expanding to be uh, carried by the mainstream top 40 stations. He and his wife, Ruth, live in Columbia, Tennessee with their two sons, Fulton and Gene. Dawson, it's great to have you back on our campus. Would you join me in welcoming Dawson McAllister to our chapel this morning? Thank you. Well, I'm a tad nervous. Got the holy of holies up here. And the... Good to see you, doctor. Good to see you. How are things on CNN? A star, a star. Anybody here have a camera? Anybody got a camera? Somebody must, like a phone camera or a camera of some sort. I'll wait just a second here. He's fishing in his bag there. Yeah, you were looking for a notebook. Thank you very much. Anybody have a phone camera, a camera anywhere? Come on up here, will you, bro? Just for a second. Yeah, in the blue. Yeah, come on. I'm a youth speaker. What did you expect? Just come on up for a moment, huh? because uh, today is uh, one of the most exciting days of my life to be here. And uh, please be kind to me. I, I went to Talbot. <laughs> And that was back in the day when you uh, could get around Hebrew. <laughs> I was one of the fun bunch. <laughs> but uh, a great hero of mine is here today, and what I'm going to ask you to do is take a picture of us, and then uh, one of my staff will talk with you and uh, get the picture. Is that all right? Uh, Dr. Pentecost, if you'd come up here, sir. <laughs> come on. Come on up here. <laughs> Here's one of the greatest men of the faith that have come through the America or the world in the last 90-some years. It's always good to be around a man who's older than me. <laughs> and, uh, sir, you are a hero to me and to tens of thousands of others who've read your books and heard your lectures. And uh, I don't know whether I'll make it to 92. I'm 60. What's so funny about that? <laughs> Mere youth. Mere youth. Got out of adolescence. In fact, I'm a youth worker. We never get out of adolescence. I heard an amen out there. Very proud of the fact. Would you take our picture? I would like to get this blown up and put on my office wall. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being a hero to me. Well, we, uh, we face an interesting time in the culture, do we not? As I said, I'm 60 years old. I've been working with teenagers for 40 years, which, by the way, should lay to rest any of you in here who say, I don't want to go into youth ministry because it's short-lived. <laughs> Let's put that to rest right now. Josh McDowell, who is one of my heroes. You remember Josh McDowell, doctor? He's 67 now. And he told me, we met not too long ago, and he told me he's booked for the next five years to talk to teenagers and young adults. That would put him at 72. So until you're 72, you don't have an argument. <laughs> People say, how in the world at the age of 60 could so many teenagers and young adults, many of them, most of them lost his last year's Easter egg without a clue, listen to you on the radio 
You know what I tell him? God's wired my voice sound what it sounds like. They don't know whether I'm 35 or 55. Plus, they're looking for mothers and fathers they never had. Plus, if you're dying, drowning, do you really care the age of the person that's throwing out the life jacket? So I've been at this a long time. I lived through the Jesus movement. Tune in, turn on, drop out. One way, brothers. Been there. Saw God do some amazing things. And as I was talking to Josh McDowell about this, we've also together watched the culture die. Don't get me wrong now, I'm a Baptist as the next boy. We love to count. In fact, if we just get to estimate, we get a lot more people saved around here. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Guy's got 500 Q points and he's still laughing, you know, that's good. I've seen a half a million kids walk the aisle. And uh, McDowell, many more. We used to run 84,000 kids through our weekend conferences. And I praise God for all that. The fact of the matter is, America's still going to hell. You know the stats, but allow me to say them again. <clears throat> On any given Sunday morning, only 10% of all, or 12% of all teenagers will be in church. You hear what I just said? 12%. Another 12% of that 12% will not be in church after their sophomore year in college. So in another couple of months when we go to our churches and we have the high school grads, you know, come up front, we give them a Bible, zip around it, white Bible, whatever. And we pray over them. I don't want to break your heart, but only 12% will stand of that group. Now, some may come back years and years later, but I'm here to tell you we've got to fall out in America to where we are in 10 years. Josh says 7, I'll say 10. We'll be down to 4% of all teenagers or young adults in church. The challenge is ours, is it not? Which begs the question, how are we going to do it? When I first met Dr. Pentecost, we did it a different way. We walked up and we said, hi, have you heard of the four spiritual laws? God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And by the way, the gospel is still the gospel, and the gospel still take care of himself, and I'm sure there's somebody doing that right across America today, and somebody's getting saved. Let's not be flippant about this. But I have found that kids are so hurting and so angry and so distrusting that there almost has to be a pre, 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 pre evangelism to get to evangelism. Does that make sense? I was moved by the words of the great evangelist C.T. Studd. He said this Some want to live within the sound of church or chapel bell. I want a rescue shop within a yard of hell. And you know, when you start hitting 58 and 57, 58, you start saying, Well, I could hang this up. You know, no one would make any, you know, say any different. But I was moved by God to say, you're not done yet. Congratulations for the 260 stations, Christian stations you've been on across America with Dawson McAllister Live. But I got something else for you. I want you to go within a yard of hell. I'm 60 years old. I think my best years are ahead of me. And so two and a half years ago, we decided to take our show to Top 40 Radio, which is uh, fraught with challenges. I was telling your president, Dr. Bailey, I was saying, you know, we, we were told it couldn't be done, that you could never get a Christian show on Top 40 Radio, Sunday nights from 10 until midnight, could not be done. 
I found out if God wants you on the air, the program director has very little to do with it. <laughs> First station that said yes, KJ103, Oklahoma City. Any of you recognize that? KJ103, Oklahoma City. He was a DJ there back. <laughs> Only chaplain I know that blows his own horn, but uh, <laughs> I got to hurry up. There's five minutes left on this Holy of Holy stage, and I'm gone. <laughs> so anyway, we we just been contract there, and we were going in to shake a few hands. This is a big deal, you know, KJ 103. Did you know that Christian media only saturates three percent of the market? They asked Willie Foote, the great bank robber, why he robbed banks. You know what he said? It's where the money is. My dad said to me, if you want to go fishing, go where the fish are. Then he said this, if you want to catch fish, what do you put on the hook? What you like or what the fish likes? America is in such desperate plight that I'll do just about anything say, violate Scripture to reach kids for Christ. If people think I'm crazy, let them think that. I always say I'm half crazy and the other half suspect. <laughs> By the way, you guys have women out there that are crazy in this seminary. You don't quite fit in. You're a little off the wall. Well, maybe your profs don't understand you, but you know what? you got a future. you off the wall, people. God can really use Granted, you're a little sick. <laughs> so we pulled up to the airport right there, and so I said, hey, I said, uh, turn on the radio. Let's see what, uh, what we're listening to on KJ103. That's our station now. Sunday nights, 10 till midnight. It's a group called Puddle of Mud. Should tell you something right there. So he starts screaming. She hates me. She hates me. She often hates me. They edited it out. So you effing hate me. I turned to my friend and I said, let the war begin. <laughs> so we've decided to pitch our tent on Top 40 Radio. And that was two years ago. We are now on 42 markets. KISS FM here in Dallas. Have you heard it? Sunday nights, 10 till midnight, with a number one station in our time slot. They were last in their time slot till we came on. We're now number one with ratings they can't believe. We've already had 5,000 calls to our off-air Let's Talk Hope line. From Dallas alone, you thought it was the buckle of the Bible belt. Well, if it's a buckle to the Bible belt, the zipper's down. It's so good to see you, Doctor. I, <laughs> there was an old song from my era and his. Bye, bye, Miss America Pie. Okay, so we're on in Dallas. We're on in Waco. We're on in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. We're on in Washington D.C., Baltimore. All top forty stations. We're on in Tampa, St. Pete, and Jacksonville, Florida, and Orlando. Charleston, South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, Memphis, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, San Diego, Salt Lake City, Minneapolis, Minnesota, all top 40 stations. And we have put our flag there and said, here we stand. And we have come to give you real answers. Because on those stations, they don't give real answers. They just entertain to shock them to get their ratings up, try to be cute and funny and dirty. And what color is your underwear? In fact, I'll say this, and then I just want to play a couple clips for you. I need your prayers for tomorrow. Now, this is really amazing, you guys. Have you ever heard of Clear Channel? Clear Channel is the largest chain of stations in America. They're trying to sell some off now, but they have 1,500 stations. 
They're the top Christian, I mean, CHR, contemporary a hit radio in the country. They own L.A., New York, Chicago, Detroit, and the like. We have been flying under the radar screen, which means our trained staff syndicators have gone and landed these 43 stations on our own. Program directors would sign up and get excited and get their buddies involved. It's all been grassroots. Well, finally, we were told we need to get national advertising as well. So we wanted to sign up an, a, a syndicator, which also helps you clear airtime. It's called syndicators. The biggest one in the country is Premier. They own Rush Limbaugh, Dr. Laura, Sean Hannity, Whoopi Goldberg. I forget it, but there's several of them. They're owned by Clear Channel. Premier is owned by Clear Channel. So we started negotiating with Clear Channel. The national program director of Clear Channel is here in Dallas. He started listening to our show. He is over all program directors of 1,500 stations. Two weeks ago, they had a meeting. He and his five vice presidents of program, they're the guys that decide what gets on the air, right? They're losing teenagers. You knew that, didn't you? Radios and uproar, iPods. Kids can make their own stations, no commercials. Satellite radio, that's not the big threat. Satellite radio, the big threat's coming, which will be um, internet radio. Internet radio, just throw terrestrial radio into a tailspin. Terrestrial means what you hear now. Now listen to this. They have this meeting, five of the top program directors, two weeks ago. Tom Owens said this, he's the head program director, we're losing kids, what we need to do is get personality radio back into it and also try to help meet the needs of teenagers. Get that McAllister show signed. That man on a flip of a switch could put me on every top 40 station in America. I meet with him tomorrow at about 11 o'clock at KISS FM's station here in town. Interesting, you know who's pushed our shows the hardest? Homosexuals and Jews. Go figure. I don't even know whether this guy knows the Lord, although the program directors are calling me now looking for spiritual help. We're on the verge of something huge. Now the radio show in and of itself is not enough. You know that, don't you? Okay, they won't let me share the gospel. Does that bother you? They'll let me show biblical truths and refer to God, but they will not let me share the gospel. I'm an old crusader rabbit. You crusaders know what I'm talking about? Old crusader rabbit. There's a large parachurch organization that would never let me speak anywhere because I was a Bible thumper. Turn or burn. I don't want to scare you. I just want to prepare you. Stuff like that. Then scare the fire out of them. But this is what we found. We used the show to say, I love you, I have answers for you, and they work. And I love you. Get off of drugs. Quit messing with your girlfriend. Turn around. Don't die. But then I say, wouldn't you like to talk with somebody further about these things? Hope line. Our off-air 800-394-HOPELINE, that's where the action is. Now they're on our turf. A website that gives answers to their issues and presents Jesus Christ. Hope coaches who will go out and actually visit. So right, right below the surface of me talking, I'm just a chandelier and throw out the big net. Are you with me? It's a certain strategy. Since we opened our Hope Line 16 years ago, we've taken almost a million and a half calls. You have no idea how badly 
I want to share the gospel on that show. Used to be when I was on Christian radio, 10% of the audience was lost, 90% was saved. Now it's flipped. They know I'm a Christian because I make that clear whenever I can. Little by little by little by little by little by little by little, move them. You know where you reach kids today? Felt needs. They're in such dire straits, they've been hurt so bad that the hurt is the common denominator. Are you with me? Do you think Top 40 Radio has the answers to their hurts? I've met the DJs, trust me. We have the answers. And evidently, with what's happened with Tom Owens and where I'll be tomorrow and what's happened this last two years, we have a listening audience now, half a million a Sunday night. That'll be pretty good on a Sunday night, won't it? Okay, let me, let me share something else with you. I just want you to think about this, and I've got to play you some clips real quick. They want us to do another show. This would be Monday through Thursday. Now, see if this gets in the way of your theology. They want to mix talk and rock. They like a Delilah on steroids. <laughs> Dawson. <laughs> She's got an audience of 20 million people a week. Shows you how far you can get on cheese. <laughs> by, the way, she claim, by the way, she claims to be a believer, so I've got to be careful here. Kid calls in, talk about an issue, and then we play a song from the top 40 that relates to his issue. It's not trash like Shake Your Booty or something. It's just straight. You with me? So you had a bad day and everybody hurts sometime. All right. Do you think that's wrong? Because there's some Christians who've heard me over the years that claim I've sold out. Let's play clip number one, bro. Yeah. Drugs are messing you around, aren't they? Yes. They're messing up my life. I messed up my entire life because I got high. Well, Jeff, let's see if I've got this right now. Your grandfather died a month ago. Uh -huh. Spent all your inheritance on drugs. Yes. Three hundred thousand dollars in one month. Yes. I lost my kids in white because I got high. I had four red scholarships to college for sports. I flushed it all down the drain because I started doing drugs. I ended up going to jail over it. My teeth are rotting out of my head right now. Because I got high, because I got high, because I got high. La -da 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 -da. Maybe you've got something in your life that's not a laughing matter. And you need to talk about it. Why don't you do that now? Call DM Live, 866-DM-LIVE-1, 1-866-365-4831. Phone lines are open. See how that works? One of the things that Clear Channel is interested in doing, we'll just see how it goes, is get a sponsor like Pepsi and have like a 90-second spot playing in prime time. Kind of like a little commentary. <clears throat> we develop rockumentaries. Rockumentaries where we mix in, well, you just heard that, a song with me talking to kids. Here's one that just, we, we have found the top imagers or guys that build these things across the country. We rent them out, you know what I'm saying? They build them for us. See if you recognize this. You thinking about dying? A lot. You're hoping if you drink yourself to sleep, you won't wake up, huh? Yep. Leah, do you know how cool of a person you are? You sure you want to throw all that away? What'd you try to do? Jump out of the building. How'd you hurt yourself? Um, no, some more calm. Well, that's certainly not the only way out. She tried to, like, slit her wrist. She didn't go all the way through with it. But it looks to me at this point she's crying out for help. Is 
that cool? It's been interesting, the number of crossover bands that have made it into top 40. Here's a clip, uh, uh, just a straight talk clip of me going hand-to-hand -hand combat with somebody. Go ahead, Joey. I'm trying to recover from a meth addiction. I found out that I was pregnant, and um, I threw the meth down. But it's an uphill battle every day trying not to use, and I don't want a screwed-up baby. Have you seen any other meth babies? My friend had a stillborn. Because of meth? Yes. I've got a boyfriend. Is he a meth addict, too? He hasn't used since I became pregnant. He does his share of other stuff, but he will not do it at home in front of me. You're living with a guy that's going out and doing drugs, and you say you're going to stay clean. I'm trying to be the strong one. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but i got to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Ain't going to happen. He's made a pact to me that he's not going to use. Let me ask you this. How many pacts and promises have you made to yourself and others over the last seven years? Everyone's been broken except this one. So far. Three months is incredible, and I am so proud of you. We got six months to go, and you're already shaking like a leaf. I've never made it more than a couple of days of being sober, and now this is the longest stretch I've ever done. You're going to have I, to go into serious, serious rehab. I don't have the money to do it, and I don't know where to go. Well, if we found some place for you, would you go? Yes. Yes, I Even go. if that meant you'd be separated from your addicted boyfriend? Yeah, because it's somebody else's life now. Anytime you hear meth, just start shuddering. What Satan did, you know, the Bible says in the end time, Satan's not going to be happy. He's uh, come down on this earth and he will not be a happy camper. And he's throwing meth right in the middle of it. You saw it in the war. You're a hero to me. You risked your life to save the country. Now, is there going to be a country worth saving? Not if we don't get busy and do something about these lost kids. There won't be. Girl calls me. She's 14. She's living with her 15-year-old boyfriend and, and his mother. And his mother wants to get pregnant so she can have a grandchild. Girl calls me. She's 14. She's on heroin. And her dad got her hooked when he was 11. Math is, is just demonic from the word go. But you know what? When the enemy comes in like the flood, God says, I'll raise up a standard and you're the standard. Shoot, I'm as old as dirt. Mother Teresa was in my first youth group. <laughs> Who do you think drove her to the convent for crying out loud? <laughs> Josh and I are getting old. Others, plenty of room at the top. You with me? You didn't give your life to come back to a culture that was dying. One more clip, Joey. I made a mistake of uh, going to a bachelor party to uh, Las Vegas. I had sex with a lady that I've been partying with for a couple of hours. She actually gave me an STD. What kind? General DeWart. HPV, it's called. It's highly contagious. The girl that I've been dating, I actually proposed to her three months beforehand. I'm afraid that she has it. It didn't show up till like two months later. I just don't know how to tell her. Wait a minute, what I thought I there was this advertisement about Vegas I've seen on TV that says what happens here stays here. <laughs> yes. Unless, <laughs> unless you get an STD and then you bring that one home, right? Yes, yes. Not to mention a guilty conscience. How do I tell her? I'd find out everything I could about the STD before you tell her about it. You go in there with a broken heart and tell her how very sorry you are. And then ask her if she will forgive you. And realize she is just going to freak out. One bad choice can lead to a lifetime of consequences. girl calls me not too long ago. What happens here stays here. Isn't that a lie? Girl calls me from Dallas. She had sex with her boyfriend who gave her HIV. And she's pregnant. So she's calling me to see whether or not I think she ought to abort the baby. 
Well, my producer immediately jumped on the website or on the computer to try to figure out what the odds are for the baby. The odds are that she has the three in four chance of not having HIV. I said, well, you know, you've got a, you've got a one in four chance that she'll get, get it. That's not a good enough reason to abort her. Sent her to the Hope Line. She gave her life to Christ and said, I will not abort my baby. What's that worth? Next call, I swear to God, next call. A guy called in, he said, I've got, I got HIV, and I've given it to three other girls. We're not talking. When's the next lock-in? One out of every three girls in America will be sexually abused by the time she's 19. You don't solve that with a hayride. One out of four guys at UCLA in a recent survey said they would rape a girl if they thought they could get away with it. You don't solve that with a hayride. 75% of all 12 to, or 7 to 12 year olds have seen pornography on the internet. You don't save that with a hayride. And I just think God is doing some extraordinary things at an extraordinary time. Satan tried to kill you over there. You know that, don't you? And God spared your life. I want to shake your hand, hero. But the war that you saw all over there is kid stuff in comparison to spiritual warfare. We're all fixing to get into if we expect to change the world for Jesus Christ. And I believe, I'm not trying to mess with anybody's majors here, but some of you, God may have been called you to go into youth ministry and you haven't been listening. Well, start listening. Studies show if a person doesn't come to Christ by the time he's 15, 85% never will. Or 18, 85% never will. These churches always talk about the age of evangelism. Where's their youth ministry? And are they willing to take in kids that are not pre-shrunk? They don't have mothers and fathers. They're, they're a mess. Wouldn't you be a mess? Came out of what they came out of? You sure would. Who's going to take them in? They're not pretty. They don't smell good. They don't act good. They aren't good. Until Christ gets a hold of them and changes their lives, it's just a flat-out mess, right? It just smells. You with me? The closer you get to them, the more it smells. But when they get saved, the better it smells. Let's pray. My time is up and then some. God may be speaking to you to go within a yard of hell. Some want to hear the sound of church or chapel bell. I want a rescue shop within a yard of hell. And maybe you're just half crazy, gut crazy like I am. I relate. Sitting in the back row reading Time, reading Time magazine during my Greek class. I relate. I'm no Dwight Pentecost, but God's used me anyway. I relate. And you're saying, God, if you want me to go within a yard of hell, if you want me to go within youth ministry, if you want me to go to the toughest places in America to redeem our poor sick kids, count me in. Anybody like that here? Stand if you would. If you want me to go there, you can count me in. That's saying if you are sitting down, that doesn't mean you're not right with God. I'm just telling there are certain people that God's been speaking to about this, and they've been kind of holding that back a little bit. Count me in. Come on. We're running out of time. There's a little girl today who's pregnant, doesn't know what to do here in Texas, here in Dallas. She's about to kill herself and her baby. We are running out of time. We got a girl that was sexually abused last night about her sick meth mother's Boyfriend, she's dying. She's full of shame. She's been abused. Boy, do we need women in youth ministry. 
You think she's going to trust a man after that? Some of you women have been sexually abused, and you've been hurt and violated and humiliated, and you've wondered why. Well, Satan meant it for evil. God meant it for good. Let's get up, tell our story. Watch these girls who've been hurt just flock to you and help you heal them. America is on the edge. And we're running out of time. Sorry you've been abused. Sorry you've had an eating disorder. I'm sorry you didn't relate to your father. I'm sorry your mother abandoned you. But God must have had something planned for you or he wouldn't be putting you around Dwight Pentecost, I'll tell you that. Lord, for those who have stood, for those who are thinking, we're available, Lord. We want to be able to hear kids say, I'm alive, I'm alive. Praise God, I'm alive. Whatever the methods are, Lord, purify our hearts about our methods, but take us to the edge. We don't want to come up with the 11th commandment, thou shalt not be bored. We want, we want to be on the edge. Christ's name, amen. Absolute privilege to be with you. Pray for me tomorrow. God bless you. God bless you.